Thanks for tuning in to the Prime Bookseller Podcast, the bi-weekly podcast discussing all things Amazon bookselling. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Prime Bookselling Podcast. I'm Eric, and we're back with another episode. Topic for today, we're going to be talking about what are what are the reasons you want to be on the Amazon selling platform, which despite all of the downsides to being on the Amazon platform, which we will probably talk about a lot of those, either in across multiple episodes or I may just throw one episode in to talk about that specifically, but there, there's a lot of downside, but, but the none of the downsides even come close to touching the upsides to selling on Amazon. And the upsides are just that we talked a little bit about this with the fees and how, yeah, the fees are very high. By Amazon giving you direct access to so to literally millions and millions and millions of customers, but this is something that you can't really trade. And there is not people will say, "Well, I can sell on Walmart or I can sell on eBay," but what you have to understand is that first of all, Walmart and eBay customers are not nearly as loyal to the to the their companies as Amazon's customers are to Amazon. As well as there just is not nearly as many customers in from any other venue that you can possibly sell on the internet. So, and this is certainly true because of when Amazon started, they were 100% a bookseller. And because of that, most Americans now, when they think about buying books, they think about buying books from Amazon. There is not, there is not a lot of people out there who... When they're they're in need of a book, their first the place that goes their mind goes to first is eBay. That's not a very common thing anymore. Everybody goes to Amazon. So especially if you're exploring this selling on books on Amazon, then Amazon is the only place you want to be. It is by far the number one venue that you want to be selling. Just gaining access to that customers, it does go a little beyond that. There is a lot of things that Amazon provides to their sellers that are great assets are kind of one of a kind with Amazon. And in the number one thing we've talked about before on this podcast, first episode was dedicated to it was the FBA program. The FBA program is, there is not many services out there that take over literally 50% of the business. Some of the most labor, labor intensive parts of your business, which would be the fulfillment of the products that you're selling, is all taken over by Amazon. And that's a huge asset. And there's probably companies out there that claim they do this, but they don't. They don't do it like Amazon does. They don't fully, fully take that all off your plate. So that's another huge, huge asset. Another big thing that Amazon provides to their sellers is just data. And we talked a little bit about this in previous episodes as well. When you get access to that Amazon API, all these, all of the third-party tools are leveraging the Amazon API to get data from Amazon that will help you to decide if you want it to make a buying decision about a product or just all sorts of information that that most companies keep very secret. Amazon makes publicly available through tools to help sellers to make good buying decisions. Now, there are other companies out there that are cloning this now because they have seen that the success that Amazon has had by providing this data. But and then you'll also read on the flip side where people will say, well, you know, Amazon's not giving us enough data. They're hoarding data so they can use it for them and they're not sharing it with anybody. But I, I guess my response to that, if you read that article and you're like, that's so not right is that what end all be all it comes down to most companies don't even make any of this data available to a regular person at least amazon is making some of it available to you to make your life a little bit easier and if you go on to another platform and try to sell they're going to have tools that are going to try and help you to find profitable products but none of the tools are going to work quite as good as the amazon tools do because not because the software developers for the tools on Amazon are better or anything like that. It just simply comes down to Amazon makes more data available to them so they can help you to make a better decision than 
than the other platforms. The other thing I would talk about with advantages to selling on Amazon is that comparatively to the other selling platforms, and I'm going to specifically use eBay in this situation, because probably the they are the second largest independent uh, retailer type model marketplace compared to Amazon. Please don't email me and tell me I'm wrong on that. Maybe Walmart has taken over that title or, well, actually I believe Shopify has taken over that title, but I think that's very vague because Shopify is not at all what Amazon and eBay are. But we're gonna just compare Amazon and eBay for a second. And the simplicity of listing to the Amazon platform is one a very unique feature of Amazon and is one of the most underrated advantages to Amazon. So the reason how I say that is, is that with Amazon, when you're listing products, unless the product does not currently exist on Amazon in any form, you are not responsible for taking pictures. You are not responsible for pro providing product details. You're not responsible for doing. Basically, when, when you list on eBay, you get this blank canvas and you have to sit down and develop everything to sell that product on eBay, which in many ways could be an advantage because it allows you to tailor it and, and be more eye grabbing to, to, uh, to a buyer. But when you're selling used books, I, there's not a whole lot you can do. A book is a book. And when a customer goes to look for a book, they're not, they're not looking for that book with that extra perk to it. They're just looking for the book they need to read. And so there's not a whole lot you can do to really differentiate yourself from other sellers. And from that sense, it more or less book selling is kind of a, a one-off thing where you throw it up on the market and you just hope it, that you come along and you're the right price for the buyer at that point in time and that buyer buys your book. And Amazon has streamlined their listing processes to make it very, very easy to list an item like that, where there isn't a lot of customization you need to do. There's not a lot you need to tell your customer about. The, it's just a book. And so with the Amazon platform, you can literally sit down and list hundreds of books in an hour. It's it, uh, If you're using some of the listing software that's out there, it's literally a one scan. You scan the barcode on the book, you type in a price, you hit submit, and that item goes up to Amazon. Whereas on the flip side, if you were doing something like an eBay, once again, you have to you have to do all this customization. They have all these different things they need to know, all these specific criteria specific criteria about selling about that item that they need to know for you to be able to list that item. And it takes what might take you five seconds on Amazon to list it will take you 35 to 40 seconds to list on eBay. And when you're when you're getting to the point in your business where you're scaling and you you're selling literally thousands and thousands and thousands of items in a month and you're bringing in pallets of inventory and you have to prep all that to ship it into Amazon just imagine in your mind where you could list one item in five seconds or you can list one item in 30 seconds. How much more efficient the process that Amazon has developed is comparatively to the system that eBay has developed. And I think that's not something that's often talked about. And it's very important for you to think about that because while you are giving up some things with the way the process that they do, you're more I mean, what they always say about Amazon sellers is Amazon sellers are kind of invisible on on Amazon, where most people, when, when they go and they buy a book from you, they don't even realize they're buying the book from you. They just know that they're buying a book from Amazon and it's going to come to them. And a lot of times they might even be surprised when it comes and it's like, oh, this is some guy named Roy, Roy's return address on this book, because they don't even realize they're buying it from an independent seller. So. It's very granular. It's very like Amazon's trying to hide the fact that they're allowing people to sell product on there. But because they do that, it makes your process of listing so much faster, so much quicker. 
and it allows you to scale your business so much faster with less labor, intensive work and things like that. So, and I think that's a huge advantage to Amazon that most people don't talk about when, when they talk about the advantages of Amazon. The final one that I'll talk about, we're going to go much deeper into this in future episodes is going to be the buy box. And what the buy box is, is if you've ever bought an item on Amazon, you will notice that when you go to the product page, there's always one that you can just throw into your cart right there. And there's typically, if it's on a book, it's usually got a new one and a used one that you can just throw into your cart. If you want to look at all the available options, you have to find the link to click on to go and look at all the available options from all the different people. And eBay and other platforms don't, what they say about the buy box is that pretty much 80% of the sales that Amazon gets just throws through the buy box. And the reason for that is, is because people are lazy. They go, they find their product. They're not, they're not even caring as long as they'll, they'll look at the price of the one that's in the buy box. And if they like the price, they'll buy it. Done. Move on with their life. And so they say that 80% of the sales on eBay or on Amazon flow through that buy box. And one of the huge advantages of that is, is that early in the early days of selling on Amazon, you couldn't even leverage that. That buy box was always owned by Amazon. And if Amazon didn't have the item in stock, that buy box went away. Um, now they're being more fair with it and they're allowing everybody to compete over that buy box. And by competing over that buy box and you win that buy box, it can drive significant sales to your items. So just the idea of having having the ability to get the buy box is a huge advantage to any Amazon seller. I will tell you that there's going to be gurus out there that are going to tell you that they have cracked the code on how to win you the buy box every time. And, and we will cover this more in that buy box episode, but don't fall for these schemes. The Buy box is designed as an algorithm that Amazon does not share with anybody. So nobody's supposed to know how the buy box is calculated and how you win. If there is somebody that comes along and says, I have cracked the buy box code and I can win you the buy box every time, they may have done it. But as quickly as they sell you a service that's going to win you the buy box every time, Amazon is going to change that whole algorithm around and they're not going to be able to win the buy box for you anymore. So it's important to understand what the buy box is and then it leads to more sales for you. But my encur my encouragement to anybody, especially if you're getting into the used book sector, is don't worry about winning the buy box. Worry about sourcing good products and the buy box will just naturally happen for you. But on the sense of what's the good about selling on Amazon, the buy box is a huge one because if you can strategically get yourself where you're sourcing a strong, good amount good books that Amazon wants and you get in the buy box more, it's just going to lead to more sales and it doesn't cost you anything more to be in the buy box. It's just a basically Amazon says, Hey, yeah, we think you should have the buy box. So uh, with that, I think we'll wrap this episode up as I kind of just outlined some of the benefits of selling on Amazon. Um, I'll come back with an, in the next episode and we'll give you some of the downsides, some of the things that I don't like about selling on Amazon. And something you'll hear me preach a lot as we go through on this podcast is that I highly encourage anybody that's starting down the Amazon road to be looking at methods to have revenue coming in from other sources than Amazon. And I want to talk a little bit about that because I think that's one of the biggest traps that most Amazon sellers, as they progress through their business, fall into is that they say, well, I'm making all this money from Amazon. Why would I ever try to do anything different? And the, pro and the reason why you should be trying to do something different and should be thinking about how you can do something different is to protect yourself. Because even though you may be selling your books to millions and millions of customers around the world in the country or whatever range you're selling your products in, in the end, you only have one one customer, and that customer is Amazon. And guess what? If Amazon doesn't want you to be selling their your books on their platform anymore, they're just going to cut you off. They're 
and there isn't a whole lot they have they have programs to you know try to get your account back and stuff like that but in the end it's kind of a wall garden that Amazon controls, and if they don't want you there, you can't. And that's not a solid way to run a business, to be completely reliant on one client. So we're going to talk about that a little bit in the disadvantages of selling on Amazon, as well as some of the other things that I really kind of despise about the Amazon platform. So with that, I'll wrap this episode up. Um, if you enjoy this podcast, please leave a review at uh you're on your favorite podcast player, and you can always reach out to us with questions, comments at sales at kingsridgemedia.com. And thanks again, everybody, for tuning in. We'll be back in two weeks with another episode. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Prime Bookseller Podcast. Join us for the next episode as we discuss all things Amazon bookselling. selling.